Uh, he was a farmer. I mean, that was his, his life. He was uh, born on a farm. He, he grew up on a farm. He was just uh, eldest son, so it was sort of um, destined that he was going to, you know, take over the farm and just carry on uh, in that. 18-year-old young lad never left home or anything, and I think he went to the infantry barracks and was sort of shalash, aren't I? And he remembered the yeomanry with him being a farmer, and so he, he went and joined up there. I thought and thought, and then at last I made up my mind. I went to the barracks and signed up right away. I was now in the army and had to report the next day. I went home feeling rather sad. Well, yeomanry were volunteer uh, soldiers. Most of them were recruited from rural areas, so there were an awful lot of, of farmers, grooms, horse lads. And it was all going to be over by Christmas. It was a chance for excitement and adventure, uh, which is a, you know, a young lad living up in a rural con community, there wasn't much opportunity for that. Uh, it's not until October 1915 that they actually leave Britain uh, and they head for Egypt. Uh, and that, that's when really their, their adventure starts. I think most of us soon got dysentery as the wind blew the sand into everything. The city of Alexandria was not too good, very, very wicked. I dare not put down in print what went on down some of those streets. They had to be put out of bounds to us soldiers. Patrols had to be found to keep the lads out. And so in the early part of the war, the Turks are trying to fight their way uh, through uh, Sinai into Egypt and get control of the canal zone. We had about a year in the Fayum, and then we had to get up to the Suez Canal as the Turks had got it and nearly got across. We crossed the canal at Kantara. Where so they are doing scouting and reconnaissance initially. Uh, and occasionally they will be clashing with Turkish patrols who are doing the same thing on the other side. Uh, and he takes part in all three battles around Gaza, as far as we can tell. I remember the early morning. We were in section formation, fours, and I couldn't see the beginning or end of the horsemen. We got the order to gallop to within a few hundred yards of the hill and had to dismount and rush for cover under the hill. We were spotted and the shells started to come at us. One got near us and in my section I had a man from Howden. A piece of shrapnel got him and he was about the first to be killed in the regiment. They, they take part in one of the last uh, cavalry charges that the British Army is involved in and they do actually draw swords and charge into Turkish guns and machine guns. All the Desert Mounted Corps were up so a charge was ordered as they were making a stand. Our squadron was well forward but we ran through them, many men and horses going down. I was lucky and got through all right. We took 70 prisoners and the whole corps, many thousands. The Turks were sent off to find another place to make a stand. Uh, I think sometimes it, it's easy to, you know, f focus on the people who die. But, you know, there's an awful lot of stories of people who went out there who fought but survived. And sometimes those, it's nice that those stories actually get told. I got out of the train and was a bit lost after three years away. But on the platform, most of Bruff had turned out. On reaching Brantingham Grange, I was greeted by a lady singing When You Come Home at Even Time. She had a lovely voice and it got me proper. I had a good bath and change before going to bed, as I was a bit lousy and very dirty. I got into bed, a proper bed, after three years. So soft, but I couldn't stand it. I had to get out and sleep on the floor. I got used to it again after a few days. It's uh, accessible history with real, real documents and about a real person. Who did we work out he was, Ricky? Your granddad or grandfather. That's right, you might. Um, I think it's very easy for us in our modern society with computers and televisions. Uh, it's very easy and it's very, very safe. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, we can overlook the fact that actually there's an awful lot of people made an awful lot of sacrifice to actually ensure that. Um, we are safe and we do have that liberty and, and the freedoms that we have in this country. You know, we're here because of them. And we're enjoying all the things that the modern world gives us.